Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a bit of like a chit chat video with you. Um, just going through some of my tips and tricks when it comes to toilet training. If you haven't watched my previous videos, um, I have a two-year-old daughter, almost three. She'll be three in November of this year. And we started potty training with her at two years and eight months. Um, we actually did it earlier than that, but if you want to see what happened during that time and why we stopped doing toilet training and we started up again, just watch my video that I did previously about my whole toilet training journey. It was more like a vlog style video, so if you're interested to see that in more detail from day one to day like three and four of how she went with toilet training, then I'll link that down below in the description bar. Um, so feel free to watch that after you've watched this video. But um, this is my second child that I have toilet trained now, so I feel like I've got some skills and tips and tricks that I want to share with you guys. Um, and she's now successfully toilet trained. So I've been going through, um, I guess, the cues to watch out for when um, you suspect they may be ready for toilet training to what to do before you start toilet training. Then some tips during the whole process. And then I want to add some bonus tips at the end. So make sure you are watching until the very end of the video. Okay, let's get started. <music> So first thing you want to do is make sure you are looking for signs that they may be ready for toilet training. Um, and this can vary from baby to baby or child to child um, on their age as to when they will be ready. Some kids are ready a lot earlier than other kids. Um, there's no set age as to when the child needs to be ready for toilet training. It does vary quite a lot. Um, it just comes down to the child. Um, and also, I feel like the second child um, picks it up a little bit quicker as well because they've got a role model of their sibling going um, and they get a lot more interested faster, I feel like, in the whole toilet training process. Um, Adriana is my daughter and I feel like she started getting interested probably around 18 months, if not sooner. Um, I remember doing her 18 month update and I was mentioning toilet training in that video because she was definitely showing strong signs that she was very keen and interest, interested to learn. Um, but yeah, so all kids are very, very different. There's no right or wrong age to do it. A couple of things to watch out for is they're showing you or telling you that they have just gone in their nappy. So for instance, if they've just done a wee, they point to their nappy or they tell you they've done something in their nappy and they want it to change right away. Another one would be if they're hiding when they need to go, especially I find a lot of kids do this if they're doing number two, they want some privacy and they'll go behind a couch or a, or a table or something to do this. So um, that's a very, very typical sign of they may be ready to be toilet trained. Next one is if they showed interest in other people going to the toilet so if they follow you in the toilet or if they um, watch other people go and they seem quite keen and interested in that another sign is if their nappy is dry for longer periods of time during the day so for instance if you usually change their nappy every like two to three hours and you realize they can go a lot longer with a dry nappy then that's definitely a sign that they're having some um, control with their bladder now um, and another sign that goes hand in hand in with that one is if they are waking up dry after a nap or even during a whole night of sleep and the obvious one is if they are asking to go to the potty or the toilet themselves once they get to this part I do think that it is time for you to be committed make the decision to start potty training them do it when they are when their interest is at an absolute high because in that way you will have more success with it as well Okay, so once you've seen all these signs and you have decided that your child is ready to be toilet trained, now it's time to get prepared for toilet training. So there's a couple of things I would suggest you to do before you even start toilet training. The first thing I'll be doing is actually purchasing some potty or toilet style books. Um, you can get these from in-store, actually just order them online. The one that I use with Adriana is this one here called First Steps Toilet Time. So this is a book that just goes through explaining to a child why nappies are for babies and not for big girls. Um, you can get a boy and girl version of this and it comes in a big pack, like a parent pack, with a um, potty training chart as well as stickers and also a handy 
um, like, like a help book for the parent as well. So really good pack to get. I use the same set for my son, but obviously in the boy version. And she pretty much can memorize this whole book, which shows you how many times we've actually read it. And during the whole potty training um, process, we actually had this book in the toilet with her. So if she was sitting down doing a number two, she'll just pull this book out and start reading to herself while she's doing her business in the toilet. So yeah, she really found um, a connection with this book as well. And what I think is really cool is that in the book, it actually shows the sticker chart that comes with the pack so they can definitely make that connection with the book to reality and it just helps the whole potty training process so this helps with conversation and just understanding of what it means to go on the toilet or the potty so you don't have to get that book specifically there's a plenty more other books on the market out there so just look out in your local store or have a look online for any um, good books like that the next thing I would do is bring out a potty if you wish to use a potty. Some people don't like that. They want to go straight to the toilet, which is fine. Um, but if your child is showing interest and you want to buy them a potty, definitely introduce it to them. Don't start training them to sit on it, but just get them to look at it and um, I guess just have an interest in it um, and know that it's there and you can kind of talk about it, um, explain what the purpose of it is. If you're using just a normal toilet, what we did is actually we bought a toilet toddler seat that attaches to our normal toilet seat um, so then that way she can sit on the toilet comfortably without the fear of her falling into the bowl um, so when we got that we obviously talked about why we got it um, what the purpose of it was that she could sit on it she's a big girl now she can use a big girl toilet and all that so just having those conversations with them and getting them to kind of process what's going on so they have a better understanding once you do start next thing that I would encourage is you modeling and allowing them to come in the toilet with you. I know this may sound gross to some of you, but it's just a part of life. We all go to the toilet. We all have to do our business. It's just part of being human um, and being a living thing, really. Um, so, yeah, definitely take them into the toilet with you. Show them what you do, how you wipe yourself, how you flush the toilet, how you wash your hands, and just go through all those sequence of events while you're doing it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable you going in with your child, um, you can always send them with your sibling, with their sibling in the toilet and show them that way. But definitely kids learn a whole lot of skills whilst they're having like a role modeling type of situation rather than you just speaking to them about it. The next thing I would do is go shopping with them to pick out their new big girl or big boy underwear. This is always a fun process and I love doing this with them because I get so excited to pick out the different designs and colors and all that of the new underwear and then take them home and wash them all and then have them ready in their drawer for when you start toilet training. It just allows them to be part of the whole process and to contribute and also to get comfortable and excited about it about the whole thing because um, they're going to be wearing undies that they've picked out themselves with characters that they want so if you didn't buy um, this pack where it comes with reward charts I would highly re recommend you go out and either buy reward charts and stickers or you can make your own or print them out from Pinterest um, so I use the, the charts that came with this book. I think you get two in the pack, um, but we ran out of them and they're not reusable, which is a shame. So I ended up just going on Pinterest and printed a whole bunch of reward charts for her and she just picked which ones she wanted and I just printed them out on like an A3 piece of paper in color as well so it's nice and visual and colorful and bright for them and then we went out and bought a whole bunch of new stickers as well so she knows that those stickers are for her toilet training chart another thing you could do if your kid doesn't like sticker charts or doesn't really um that doesn't help them get motivated to do different tasks you can definitely do other rewards like jelly beans in a jar or like little prizes or like a lucky dip um, what I did for Adriana, because I felt like the number two was a bit of an issue with us when we first started. She'll go number one fine, but with number two, she would always start it in her undies first and then um, be too late to go to the toilet. What I did to help her motivate her to actually do that in the toilet is say to her that you get stickers 
if you go number one, so if you do a wee, you get a sticker on the chart, but if you go number two, you then get a prize. And I showed in the video that I did previous to this on the toilet training journey video of all the little prize that I bought for her. Now these don't have to be expensive, they could be just simply like a couple of dollars um, or it could be like a lollipop or a food item, whatever you feel your child will um, like gravitate towards more. And then as she went on, um, I started to reduce those prizes because then she got a pro at doing number twos and number ones, um, but then was having difficulty staying consistent and doing that at, like when she wasn't in my care. So when she went off with grandparents, she would still have accidents. So then I changed the whole reward system to say to her that, okay, if you don't have an accident at your grandparents' house, then you'll get a reward at the end of the day. And so that just gave her that extra boost again to make sure she wasn't doing, you know, wasn't having any accidents. She was going to the toilet um, no matter where we were, whether she was with me or not with me. Um, and that, so I, you can adjust the prizes accordingly to how they um, go along with, you know, um, catching on to toilet training or they're still having struggles with certain things. For instance, some kids have some difficulties when they're out and about, like out of the house. Then you can say to them, look, if you tell me you need to go during our little outing today um, and you have no accidents, then when we get home, uh, you can have a prize from the Lucky Deep. Um, so just little incentives like that to get them motivated. And kids love rewards and love praises as well. Lots of praises is a must. The last tip before you start toilet training is to commit yourself to at least three days of doing nothing. So block out a whole long weekend. Um, don't make any plans whatsoever. Try and stay inside the house as much as you can during these three days and just use this this time to focus on your child and potty training and that is it. Um, you, I feel like this is the best way to get results. I've done it both ways. So with my son, I did the whole three days and he was amazing. With my daughter being the second one and uh, I guess being limited with time as well, trying to manage both kids plus work plus all the other commitments I had, I kind of did it very gradually and very casually. Um, in a sense where I was just, um, you know, if I just saw that she wanted to go, I'd go like, oh, okay, let's go to the toilet. Yep, great, good on you. I didn't have a rewards chart. I didn't have any of those systems in place. So it was very casual and I feel like she got confused a lot of the times. So I was putting her in pull-ups or nappies during our outings. And then at home, she'll be back in undies. And sometimes she got confused and didn't know whether she was in undies or not undies. And it just got really messy. So I feel like, Locking out the weekend of you just being committed to doing toilet training is the best way to go. Um, it's the quickest way to do it as well. So just get out of the way, three days of commitment, and then you're pretty much done. It's just consistency after that. Um, but yeah, I just find that the, that's the easiest way to do it. Alright, so now we're up to getting toilet training started. So here are my tips for day one, two and three of toilet training. So on day one, I would recommend no undies, nothing. So no nappies, no undies, just butt naked. Um, I feel like this like makes the connection a lot faster with them going and filling it because obviously they can see it as well it's just like treating all those senses that they have and just um getting that connection a lot faster so no undies no nappy nothing just butt naked um if you're doing this in winter just crank up the air con the heater and just have it nice and toasty and warm in the house for them Another thing I would recommend on all of these days is give them lots and lots and lots of liquids. So whether that's juice or water or um, smoothies or whatever you can to get lots of liquid in them so they're going a ton during those first couple of days because you want to be watching them, take, getting their cues as to you know the signs that they are showing if they need to go and picking up on those signs very, very quickly to race them over to the toilet before they have an accident. Um, so just give them lots and lots of liquids. So there's lots more opportunities for you to put that training into place for them during those days. Another tip is probably an obvious one, but show them loads of excitement, loads of enthusiasm when they are going. Um, and just be super excited about the whole process. Never punish or get upset 
if they do have an accident. This is how they're going to learn. They have to have accidents. Accidents are good. Take it as a learning opportunity to teach them that that's okay. Okay, you had an accident now, but this is where we need to go if it comes again. Um, and just redirect them over to the toilet. What I did as soon as Adrienne had an accident, I would still pick her up and take her over to the toilet and get her to sit there. Even if she has finished the whole thing, just so she can make that connection of doing a wee and, you know, the toilet as well. So never punish them for having accidents even if it's a number two i know it's yucky to clean it up it's messy but it's the way they're going to learn another tip i would have for you is to come up with some kind of verbiage to teach them when they need to tell you they want to go so on the first day i would be probably just reminding them every 15 to 30 minutes um, asking that they need to go however you want to move from this probably on day two or three and get them to start asking you um, so I would start with some verbiage right at the start so don't wait until day or day two or three to do this um, I would implement the like I would introduce the verbiage a lot earlier so you would say to them okay so if you need to go to the toilet you need to say Da, 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 da. So you come up with what you feel comfortable, what you feel your kid will pick up most depending on their age. What I said for Adriana was just say to mummy, mummy, wee wee, mummy, poo poo. And that was really easy for her to pick up. So when she had an accident, even on day one, I would just say to her, remember what you have to tell mummy when you need to go to the toilet. And then she would repeat back, mummy, wee wee, mummy, poo poo. I said, yes, that's right. That's what you need to say. Can you remember that next time? And she would just nod her head. Just that repetitive reminder that that's what she needs to say if she needs to go rather than having an accident and making a big mess. Um, so just start that, that verbiage right at the start on day one. Introduce that to them so bait by day two and three, maybe they would have started saying that back to you. Okay, so on day two, I would start putting undies on them. So introduce the undies to them on day two. If you feel like day one didn't go as good as you had hoped, maybe just leave the undies out again and just do nothing. Um, so like butt naked again. Um, but if they did pretty good on day one and you think you're, they're kind of getting the understanding of, you know, making that connection, then get some undies on them, continue on with the liquids, continue on with the reinforcements, the encouragement, the rewards. Um, and on day two, I would also do like a little outing in the backyard. So don't take them out of the house just yet. I would start with the backyard first because the backyard is a lot of distraction in itself and they're only still very, very new to toilet training. So don't go out um, on an outing as such. Just take them in the backyard, get them to run around, play a board game with them, do some painting or something simple like that. But keep an eye on them throughout the whole process as much as you can so you can catch any accidents or cues that they need to go because they will be a lot more destructive. You want to still keep a good eye on them while you're outside because um, they'll have a whole lot of distractions for them and they may forget to tell you and have those accidents. Um, but definitely challenge them and take them out for a little bit even if it's only 10 minutes on day two. Day three, I would definitely have them in undies by this stage. And day three, I would try and do an outing out. Even if it's only for half an hour, take a lot of extra undies, socks, pants, even an extra pair of shoes because they may have an accident while you're out and it may go everywhere, even over their shoes. So pack another pair of shoes as well. But try half an hour out, go longer if you think they're doing pretty good and just do the same thing. Give them liquids, keep reminding them and keep, um, you know, keep watching them for those cues. So now I'm on to my extra tips. So my extra tips would be, I usually will ask Adriana before any meal to go to the toilet and wash your hands because you need to wash your hands before you eat anyways. So I'll just add, go to the toilet as well. And usually that was kind of like a casual sign that, you know, would prompt her to go. Even if she didn't need to go, she would try to go or she would just say, no, I don't need the toilet. I'll just wash my hands. And that's a-okay for me. I would never force my child to go to the toilet. Would never get to the point where she's crying. Even if I think she really needs to go, I'd rather her have an accident then for her to cry and make it a traumatizing experience for her. I don't want to do that. Please don't do that to your child because it will just make the whole thing a negative experience and then they it will take a lot longer for them to get the idea of toilet training. So 
um, yeah, I would just say before any meal, okay, Adriana, time to go toilet and wash your hands. And that will be just like a little prompt for her to go at that point. I would also do this before a nap and also when she wakes up in the morning. Um, so, you know, let's go to the toilet and put a nap nappy on and then go to sleep. Or, you know, we've woken up, let's take our nappy off. Oh, hang on, do you need to go to the toilet before I put the undies on? And just prompt her that way again. Another tip I will have for you is when you're getting them ready for for bedtime like a nap or like nighttime bedtime then don't put the nappy on them until the very minute before they lay down to go to sleep because again you don't want to give them that confusion of wearing a nappy to wearing undies um, because they don't know what they're wearing half the time so make sure you don't put that nappy or pull up on them if you're using that for naps and sleep time right until right before they need to go down for that sleep um, again it's just extra time for them to practice going to the toilet and as soon as they wake up from their nap or bedtime sleep make sure you just rip that nappy off put them straight into undies as soon as possible don't wait too long otherwise they will just get lazy and they just want to do their business in their nappy rip it straight off chuck it out even say oh yuck this smells tell them it smells it's yucky and get them to have like a negative connection with nappies so they don't want them anymore and just want to always put undies on Another tip would be to talk about their toilet training progress and um, success with other people whilst they're around as well because kids again love praise especially when you're talking about them um, in a positive way so if you're out on a play group then talk about how they're going potty all the time and they're doing so well with it with other people around you and also that will get the other people in your life that they um, are connected with they will get start getting praises from them as well. Another tip would be once you have committed to toilet train, go at it full force. Don't do it casually like I did um, and just take them now and again because it's just going to draw out the whole process. Be committed, be consistent and keep at it. Don't go back and put them in um, the nappies when it gets a little bit too hard or whether you they have like a bit of a regression with it because that is all normal and part of the process just keep going keep being persistent keep being consistent as well with it and they will just follow your cues um, but if you give up they will definitely give up as well so, so that is the end of my video I hope that's given you some tips and tricks and some extra things that you may have not heard of before um, to help you and your child during your potty training toilet training journey um, I hope you have great success with it if you have any questions about um, toilet training in general just leave them down below in the comments below I'd love to chit chat with you um, and if anyone sees your questions and I haven't responded yet please feel free to respond to those questions as well um, and just to get that conversation going if you need any extra tips or tricks also feel free to just private message me as well I'll be more than happy to try and help you on your journey um, and guide you in the right direction if I can do that um, anyway thanks for watching I hope you have found it helpful I hope you all have a lovely day as well and I'll see you in my next one bye everyone